In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the shaft opening tool to create a vertical shaft up the height of a multi-storey building. Here's a demo project I've just quickly created in order to demonstrate this tool. I've left two of the walls off this building just to make it easier to see what's happening once we create our shaft. So first of all I'm going to switch to a plan view level zero so at the bottom of the building the shaft opening tool can be found on the architecture menu and if you look along to the right of the the ribbon on the opening panel you will see shaft so we select that Revit immediately goes into sketch mode we can always identify when we are in sketch mode by the presence of the green tick and the red cross so what we need to do next is define the boundary of our shaft. Remember you've got access to all these tools on the draw palette. So I'm just going to do a three straight line segments. And then I will add a radius to the one side. So there's my boundary to my shaft. If just before I complete this operation, we'll look over to the left at the properties palette. The shaft is going to start at level zero, so the base constraint. We, of course, we can change that from the drop down, but I'll leave it at level zero. Base offset minus 150, so the bottom of the shaft is actually going to start 150 mil below level zero because this base offset is applied to whatever level we've picked here. The top constraint is unconnected at the moment. I'm actually going to send that up to level six. And now all I need to do is hit the green tick to create the shaft. And if I switch back to my 3D view, there is the shaft object created. You can think of this as a void form. That's what we've actually created. So if I click anywhere else to deselect the shaft, you can see that what we're actually left with are the apertures created in each of the floor levels. If I carefully hover over the model with my cursor, you can see it is possible to find that shaft form and I can click it and select it again and bring up its properties. If we need to edit the position of the shaft, go to any of our floor levels and I can simply pick it up and drag it around. Obviously it's moved in the 3D model. However, if I need to change the shape of the shaft, I need to go back and edit the sketch. So with the shaft selected in a floor plan view, I have an edit sketch button which basically takes me straight back into the sketch mode where I can go and make adjustments to the shape of the boundary. The other thing I can do is add symbolic lines. I know some people on their architectural plans like to have shafts um, shown with a symbol, quite often a pair of crossed lines so add those with symbolic lines, hit the green tick to remake the shaft. Again, if I go back into a 3D view, there is the shaft we've just edited. But if I go into any of the floor plan views as we rise up our building, you can see that Revit now automatically adds the symbolic lines onto the shaft where it cuts through a floor plate. Now the shaft void form as you can see is cut through our floor elements. It will also automatically cut through ceiling elements and roof elements. It will not however cut through any other category of object. So if we had created a stair going up our building here we could actually place the stair in the center of this shaft and it wouldn't be cut by the shaft itself. Likewise for elevators or lift objects, 
it only cuts through floors, ceilings and roofs. Many more tutorials and articles on Autodesk Revit architecture can be found at bimscape.com. Once at the home page, just navigate to Articles, Autodesk Revit.